Box Book Club today. CNBC hedge fund specialist and one of our very own Squawk Box producers and good friends, Manita Huja. She has spent the last three years putting together the Alpha Masters, unlocking the genius of the world's top hedge funds, which officially launches today. It is a fantastic book. You all need to run out and get it immediately. And I am not pandering to you. I say that is the truth. It really is a remarkable book about all of these hedge fund managers, and you get behind it and inside their worlds in a way that uh, I don't think we've seen before. Manit, congratulations. Thanks, guys. It's Thanks for wonderful. having me. And, and, and you won't be Manit Ahuja much longer. It's going to be, we all call her Manuja because you're a one word person now. <laughs> like, like Madonna. Madonna. Like Madonna. Uh, we'll take it. Yeah, exactly. It's so we can, we can choose from any of the characters in the book Ray Dalio, Dan Loeb. Uh, who, who, who should we go to I like first? I like, Tepper? I like talking about Dalio because I, I, of that weird... We've had him on. And right. He, came on, him on he never came year. on, but he came on TV because appearance. someone said he had a cult. And he came on to sort of refute <laughs> that it's a cult there. But, like, listening to him, I wanted to join his cult. So it's definitely not a cult that I can join. I mean, he's brilliant. Right. right. Well, yeah. Well, I mean, you're not the only one. The White House reads his daily observations. So do uh, policymakers. The World Bank was his first client. They actually convinced Dalio to become a hedge fund, to manage money actively. McDonald's actually came to Dalio when they created the Chicken McNugget to hedge uh, chicken prices, to help them figure out how to <laughs> hedge chicken prices. Minnie, what made you decide to want to write this book? Well, actually, uh, a couple of my sources are well connected in the publishing scene and said that, you know, look, you have incredible access. Squawk Box has. Best Rolodex in the business. Is no, this true or not? This is absolutely true. A hundred percent. Only because of yours. Only because no, no, it's no, the best better show. than mine by a mile. Only because it's the best show in, in oh, the business, oh, right? Nice. So people actually want to come on. We're, we're, we're all working towards a collective goal right. here. So What do you got on Tepper? You got anything good? Well, I mean, there was a story that came out Friday where Tepper had said, you know, back in the day when he was at Goldman that uh, it, he didn't come out and outright say it, but he said that uh, he thought that Goldman might have been suggesting he make some questionable trades. Right. You have to the Muppets. Sort of. <laughs> yes, a little bit like that. You have a chapter on the man on the other side of the J.P. Morgan London Whale. Tell us about it. So, Boaz Weinstein, he's this young upstart that started uh, on, uh, on Wall Street at 18. I started at 17, so I always hold that up against him, even though he's, uh, he's way more intelligent than I am. And uh, basically, uh, he, he got in on this trade in November of last year, and he actually presented it at the Harbor Conference that uh, CNBC covered in February. And uh, it just, you know, it recent, recently got picked up in the news. And But it, this was huge. The New York Times had a huge write-up on him over the weekend in the Sunday business section just saying that he's the guy who first spotted the problems in the market, realized that there was a, a mispricing in the market, and went after it. And he was getting killed for a while. But since then, it's completely turned I mean, around. With, with the Morgan's average performance of a lot of hedge funds, I mean, that's the, the bright side of the J.P. Morgan trade. It really did. Yeah. I mean, if there's only one J.P. Morgan, but how many hedge funds did really well on this? I mean, can we look at the bright side of, of the whole? Because yeah. it could be $4 billion. They split up eventually, right? Right. I think um, that's it's nice. about impricing in the market. Right. It's it is. But all, it's also about being the market, being so large right. in the trades that you become the market so everyone just feeds off of you from the other side of the trade. Minnie, is, I'm yeah. curious. You spent so much time with so many of these these big name hedge fund uh, folks who often live in a very private world. Is there a theme, something about them uh, collectively that, that you take away, a lesson about the way they think about the world that's, that's either singular or... Oh, for sure. So there are a couple of commonalities that I've figured out just recently when you're looking at the final product. I actually didn't see the final book until, you know, uh, about a month or two ago. But I didn't even realize this. Every single one of these guys is self-made. They're all mm -hmm. incredibly relentless. Earned Dalio success. started. Success. But is anyone? Dalio started caddying when he was 12 years old. Yeah. You yeah, know, a, a lot of them had menial jobs when they were is younger. Is anyone happy or well adjusted, or just is that they're a no? They're all happy no. because they're they? doing okay. what they love to yeah, do. Yeah, and it's, it's not, not about the money, though. Right. It's, it's not about the money because they, they can well buy and sell though? us a hundred times over right. at this point, right? So. Okay, Monique, thank you. Good Congratulations. Thank the book you. is The Alpha Masters. Go Make out sure and get it, it immediately. Congratulations, Monique. Thank you. That does it.